many new car dealers are faced with the possibility that they might be going down and going out of business because of the modern day crisis. New cars are at risk, used cars are also at risk, and I'll talk about something that happened to me this week when I sat down to possibly buy a used vehicle. But it's the new car sector that is causing a lot of disruption for the new car dealers. What is starting to go on is not just impacting consumers, but it's actually impacting new car dealers. You might actually find yourself in a position where you can buy yourself a great new car and get yourself a phenomenal deal. Take a look over here. We have this beautiful little F-150. This is a Tremor right here. And I look on the sticker sheet here and we see because of what some of these new car dealers are faced with. Today, car shoppers are actually looking at extensively high MSRP sticker prices for their vehicles. They're also worried about monthly car payments and they're trying to budget it in accordingly. And as well, high interest rates are having a big impact on your ability to buy a new car. Now you look at some of the prices of some of these vehicles, they are sky high and they're not going down anytime soon. For example, but some of those phenomena and some of those items are not unique to the car buyer. They're actually somehow impacting the new car dealers. And some of these factors are finding a very unpredictable set of circumstances for the dealers. And that term is called floor plan expenses. You ask yourself, what's floor plan expenses? What is the floor plan? Well, the floor plan is essentially a rotating amount of credit that can is offered to the dealers to purchase vehicles that would otherwise they'd have to buy flat out. They may not have the full amount, just like you as a consumer. You don't always have the full amount to buy a car cash, so you go in there and you buy a car on lease or on finance, but that usually comes with a lending cost. Interest rates obviously can impact a new car buyer, but obviously it also impacts the dealers who actually have to fill their car lots with vehicles often that are overextended with interest charges. Have lots of vehicles on the car lots like this as you look around, no shortages. They've been loading up for some time. And it's these interest charges which can quickly turn a vehicle from an asset to its big liability in short time because a lot of what we're finding is the longer these dealers are holding on to these vehicles the longer these floor plan charges start to accrue now we're into 2023 rolling into 24 we have vehicles that have been sitting on the car lot we've seen this before I've talked about this and we see a price tag of what seventy seven thousand nine hundred dollars on this one where some of the Jeeps and the Dodge Chrysler products, Stellantis products, it's not uncommon to see vehicles that are on car lots for 100, 120, 150 days. And those charges really start to impact the dealer. We're talking about on a monthly basis, every time they have to make another payment to interest charges, it's gonna cost huge money, and that's money out of the pocket for the dealer. So they're going to incentivize the sales of a lot of these vehicles. Now, obviously the modern day general managers are always looking at the inventory, what they have, how long those vehicles have been there for, and they collaborate with their sales managers to say, hey, I can offer up certain aspects. I can give you obviously incentives. We need to push these products. Some of them might, you know, this goes on across the nation. These particular vehicles have high incentives. Go out there and push this line of Jeeps. Maybe push these line of Rams or even Toyotas, Hondas. Anything that's been sitting on the relevant lots are potentially going to be a liability in short order. Once you run beyond 30 days, it starts to add up and some of those costs start to accrue. And then became the victim of such a scam now. And some key examples, total floor plan spending comes, for example, in the way of significant dollars. How much? Huge firms like Group One, Lydia, as well as Auto Nation have hit numbers like $126.7 million in 21, rising up to $202.6 million in 2022, and 23 rounded off with over $363 million. Just ask anyone in the automotive industry and you'll quickly find that this is a significant cost. No doubt, same with you. There's no doubt that has a huge impact on the operating expenses of a local Local dealer or manufacturer, no, no different than it does for you as a buyer. As a buyer, if you have a car and you're making payments, but you have these other costs that are starting to hit you, for example, maybe rent goes up, maybe food prices go up. Now you have a very difficult conversation to make or really think about. You have to prioritize again and you might have to decide. I'm underwater on this vehicle payments. Do I have to sell and liquidate, get rid of this vehicle? Or do I have to not eat that month? And we have a little bit of a larger truck over here. And this one is $113,000 right here. That's a very difficult decision. And the dealers are in a very similar position. And we found some of this going on. They've had to look at potential layoffs, reducing some staff, certainly maybe cut some other expenses. And it's not just on the new side. Obviously the floor plan costs are huge on the new sector, but when you're talking about a dealer and they're trying to sell some of the used cars, that's a place that they can start cutting costs. I'll share a little story. I was actually in on a dealer 
test drove a vehicle that was slightly used this last weekend. And I went in there, sat down, I liked the vehicle, I thought it was kind of fun. It was time to start talking numbers. They wouldn't budge. And quite frankly, I thought they were being a little ignorant. Then they threw a couple of things at me. And this dealer was literally, when we sat down at the dealer's table with the salesperson, they actually literally said, look, here's some extra costs. We have to charge Amvic $6.25, but they didn't break that down. They said, we need to charge for Amvic. I said, no way, that's a dealer operating cost. They were trying to hit me with that. And then they said glass etching, but they had this total number of $850 or 800 some dollars for glass etching and as well as Amvic fees. Amvic is cost of doing business. That's part of the legality. Yes, it has to be paid. It's part of the process if you're an Amvic approved dealer, but the glass etching, yet another one. They were trying to round up and top up this whole conversation with some additional costs, which I had no part of. I said, not only that, we're not even talking about the base price of the vehicle. So first of all, I'm not paying those fees. And second of all, we need to knock some more price off the price of this vehicle. Otherwise, I'm just not interested. So now we're having dealers trying to find creative ways to rejuvenate or capture some of those costs elsewhere. It's not just on the floor plan. Now they're trying to go outside. They might hit you with some other costs at the service center, parts. They might start putting some premiums in places like that. Maybe instead of giving you coffee, they'll just say, hey, here's a token, whatever. But they're going to start cutting costs and even apply some of these costs on some of the used vehicles just to recoup that. After all, it's a business, right? So if you lose in one space, you have to take in another. Just like I said, the, the whole adage of if you start to get hit personally with increased rent, then you might have to look at doing something more drastic with the vehicle expenses. The dealers are looking at the same thing and it's starting to hit all of us in the pocketbook. And currently, as a great example, with these really high interest rates, they could be sitting on a $50,000 vehicle, for example, which is a very commonly priced vehicle. It doesn't take long to buy an SUV or a pickup truck on the lower end of the scale for 50 grand. And they could actually be faced with interest charges monthly that run up to at least several hundred dollars. So clearly, you do that times about, say, 500 vehicles, and you do the math on that, and now they're faced with significantly high-priced overhead. So now you start to see the picture. As these manufacturers, these dealers, OEM dealers, are sitting on a whole pile of inventory, and we already know that, as we walk the lots and we see a lot of these Jeeps, we see a lot of these pickup trucks are all sitting on the lot and there are lots, there's acres of these vehicles. That's a very finicky place to be. While they have a lot of inventory and a lot of selection, it's great for the customer. Remember, the consumer is in a good position right now. Now, they might be playing hardball and they might even make you go away thinking that they're not going to negotiate. But remember, floor plan is starting to bite some of these dealers in the rump and they're going to be more and more motivated to move these. And now, as we're moving into 24, they're still looking at 2023 models on the car lots that they're going to be really incentivizing. This one costs with this beautiful, obviously 6.7 liter diesel. And this one here is actually stickered at about $105,000. Quite a significant chunk of change. And they're really motivated to punt along. So now electric vehicles, for example, are now a bit exposed. They're not as good for the environment. And now that we've seen some minus 35, minus 40 degree weather, they've also been exposed to a lot of people that bought them and wondering, hey, that was a true mistake. So now some of the costs of the battery replacements, the actual ownership experience in the winter time, obviously in some of the maintenance costs, the higher price of batteries and tires and some of the other insurance costs that are escalated means that people are second guessing. And even with some of the incentives that the government's offering up and the local dealers, still people are reluctantly buying or not deciding to not buy some electric vehicles. So they've leveled off. And so now dealers pitching those, for example, Tesla and a lot of these manufacturers, even that are just selling pure EVs now, are struggling with selling those vehicles. Charging costs, they got to keep the vehicle charged on the lot. Small amount of power costs becomes parasitic when you have a fleet of 100 electric vehicles plugged in simultaneously. That's a parasitic cost. Holding costs, of course, floor plan was going to impact those as well. People are going back to some of the lower cost internal combustion engines, while a lot of the higher priced, higher margin vehicles are sitting and they're not selling like they did six months or a year ago. And of course, this does impact negatively the floor plan. And hence, here we have a situation where a lot of these dealers are starting to struggle. Not like a lot of you are going to feel sorry for them, but the bottom line is, it doesn't take long to figure out. We're starting to see a lot of the car lots filling up, the inventory backlog, it's there. You have options. You have choices. And remember, incentives are starting to come. Don't be in a rush because remember, they are starting to become a little bit more motivated to sell these vehicles. And we're seeing 30, 60, 90 days on a car lot just means that they're stuck with those car payments. Now, when you're talking about a finite margin on these vehicles, 
and then you start incorporating some of these floor plan costs as well as staff and all the other overhead it starts to become less palatable for these dealers and they have to get these vehicles moving but you and I as a consumer know that with high cost of living as well as high interest rates that don't seem to be impacted for example I see in the Bank of Canada decided here another recent assessment here yesterday determined that because the GDP is good we have inflation's holding steady but it's not actually dropping that they're still holding steady on the cost of lending so that hasn't changed. The bottom line is people are stretched thin and they're not deciding actually not to buy a vehicle. A lot of people are making that choice to actually fix what they've got because it's just going to be cheaper in the long run. So a lot of these manufacturers are sitting on vehicles and becoming much more desperate. That puts them in a predicament. That puts you in a good position for negotiation if you happen to be in a good financial spot to buy one, but that potentially puts the dealers in a struggle. And there are dealers that are struggling bad in a place where there is a serious crisis about to hit a lot of these dealers and some of them are faced with some seriously difficult conversations. So I hope that helps each and every one of you. There could actually be some opportunities, but be sure to check out that video and understand what's going on with the truck crisis. There's definitely a lot more to talk about there. Trucks with the high margins, big costs, sticker prices rising on Ram and Dodge. Why do they keep cranking up prices when buyers aren't buying? Anyway, I hope to see each and every one in the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.